In this short film, we join Vision Foundation supporters at a reception where sculptor and Vision Foundation Vice President Francis Siegelman will be sculpting fellow Vision Foundation Vice President, the Right Honourable the Lord Blunkett. We hear from Vision Foundation Chief Executive Olivia Kerno, Vision Foundation Trustee Dr Amit Patel, Vision Foundation supporters Jürgen Donaldson and Esme Kalik, and sculptor and Vision Foundation Vice President Francis Siegelman. A couple of years ago, Francis very generously agreed to become a Vice President of the Vision Foundation. And through that role, she's um, used her incredible talent to raise awareness about a multitude of issues. She most recently sculpted our royal patron, the Countess of Wessex, which was a phenomenal opportunity. And tonight, she is sculpting one of our other vice presidents, Lord David Blunkett, who has, um, through his career, really, really changed people's expectations of what a visually impaired person can do, but also made a huge mark on society through his wider work as a as a politician. He's vision impaired himself, he knows the challenges, he's got, he's got the power to make people listen. For me Lord Blunkett, if I think back to my childhood, was probably the most recognisable person who had a visual impairment. You know, the way in which he's led his life and really kind of gone above and beyond to really stand out and say this is what blind people can do when they're given the opportunity. Lord David Blunkett is an example to us all really that anything's possible and I think he sets that stepping stone for people like me that whatever your dream is it doesn't have to be sort of politics it could be anything dream dream big and you can have it and don't let your disabilities limit you. David is committed and real and passionate about the things he cares about and I think he will be very much himself and I just know that Francis will capture that. Art has always been visual you know but for someone like me who's, who's vision impaired it's tactile as well. We're talking about tactile, we're talking about how it makes you feel, we're talking about the emotions, we're not talking about how it looks anymore and, and sometimes that's what art is. It's, it's, it's something to somebody in a different way. But I was saying to David, you know, when it's finished, he will feel it and he'll know what it feels like. And I think he enjoyed the experience of even sitting. And to be honest, I really enjoyed sculpting him. He was so lovely. This evening's event is about our report, The Unseen, which looks into domestic abuse in the sight loss community. Before we launched this research, we didn't know how big the issue was, but now we know that one in 12 blind and partially sighted people will be the victims of domestic abuse. We estimate that nearly 200,000 people across the UK are impacted, and we also know about the nature of the abuse. We know that the abuser uses the victim's disability against them. The report that the Vision Foundation have produced highlights just what goes on behind closed doors. The fact that there isn't help and the support and the services, there isn't a pathway, there isn't someone you can just pick up the phone to and say, I need help. Domestic abuse is just unbearable to think about. That people are trapped in homes and they can't see to get out and they're being hurt. Anybody that's able to help to do something should do something. I became involved after Vision Foundation had approached me because of my story, meaning I'm a domestic abuse survivor. And I think if this organisation or any organisation had had sort of a campaign 10 or 15 years ago, where would I be now? I mean, unfortunately, I began this journey up to um, sight loss through domestic violence, so I wasn't blind before then. And I think so much could have been prevented because I stayed in the relationship because I found no means of getting help or leaving the relationship. For us, the more we talk about it, the more it becomes mainstream, and the more help and the support and the services will be available out there. Francis's artwork is phenomenal. Just the, the scale of the scope, the different individuals that she's been able to connect with through her work. And so many of her projects, particularly those who, that are facing really, really hard issues, she's bringing ideas to life and she's immortalizing people, uh, but also forcing conversations that need to happen. There's nobody doing this, nobody's talking about how domestic violence affects people with vision loss or sight loss, so I think they're doing a fantastic job and I think today is a um, testament to that, that they've managed to get all these people together to really listen and take notice. The Vision Foundation has been championing the rights of blind and partially sighted people for a hundred years and there have been huge strides in that time, but also there's so much more to do. 
people need to know. People need to be able to recognise it so that potentially non-disabled people, sighted people, can be part of being allies to support individuals going through it. I don't want anybody to feel like they, they're ever alone, that they don't have the help, they can't reach out, they, there's no support. It, it, it breaks my heart knowing that people are, are there going through that abuse and not being able to reach out because they don't know where to reach out to or who to trust. If I could say something, even to myself, if I could go back and say something or to anyone who is in a similar situation where they're feeling trapped, is that there is help out there, you just have to be confident and ask for it. And if you're in a situation where you can't ask for help, then sort of speak up and just say you want to be alone or you can speak to someone. There's always help out there. There's people out there willing to help you. You just have to work out the courage. And once you beat that sort of first stepping stone, that first doorway, it does get easier. It gets so much easier. There's a whole world out there. Everybody in the room here is here for a reason. And we all know they're here for a reason. Whether it be to network, to get better connections with other organisations, whatever it is, we know we're going to make a difference.